So, it's Hallie. I'm back with more Rising Knight. I thought we were done last time, but here's the thing. We totally forgot to see the other option here. We, we talked to Natsuki, I do believe, so now we're going to talk to Yuri. Yuri seems very passionate and experienced when it comes to literature. So, if I want a good recommendation, my best bet's probably going to be her. Oh, wait, we're still Hallie MC, aren't we? Yeah. I feel sort of bad for disturbing her reading as she looks pretty invested in that book of hers. Although I'm sure she wouldn't actually mind all that much. I walk up to her cautiously, regardless. As I near her desk, she appears to take notice of my approach. Ah. Yuri swiftly looks away, acting as if she didn't just see me by hiding her face deeper in her book. <sighs> I just for about forgot she was like that. Hey, Yuri. She lowers the book from her face slightly, finally making eye contact. Sorry to bother you, but I was wondering if you had a book I could borrow to pass the time. Oh, of course. Yuri reaches into her bag and grabs, a bu or grabs out a book. Here. It's a short read, but it's one of my favorites. She hands me the book, and I take a look at the title. Portrait of Markov. I don't believe I've heard of it before. It also has an ominous-looking eye symbol on the front cover, too. I go to check the synopsis on the back, but Yuri speaks up. But basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long-lost son younger sister. But as soon as she does, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escaped from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships, and her life starts to fall apart. Uh huh. Well, that took a dark turn. It sounds interesting, but it was a little shocking hearing that all come from her so casually. Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to ask if you're into that sort of thing. I can get a different book for you if you'd like. No, it's fine. I enjoy those kinds of stories, don't worry. I'm glad. These kinds of stories challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals, or their own philosophy that they believe in. Then suddenly, when you thought you related to the protagonist, they're made out to be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plan. I I'm rambling, aren't I? I'm sorry. You don't have to apologize, Yuri. It doesn't bother me at all. This is the literature club, after all. But that's... well, that's true. The story's premise sounds interesting. It makes sense why you're into this sort of thing. I wouldn't mind taking a look at this. I take a seat at the desk next to Yuri's, opening the book to the first page. Uh oh, you wouldn't mind if I sat here, right? Not, not at all. I take note of Yuri's apprehension, but pay it little mind. It seemed more like she was nervous than worried anyway. Knowing how timid she can be from the small amount of time we've spent together, I'd assume she isn't used to reading in company with anyone, or with someone. I don't blame her. As I read, I can sort of feel her presence to the left on my shoulder. It's not particularly distracting, but it's not something I'm used to quite yet either. One thing's for sure, it's nice knowing there's someone in the club I can share at least some similarities with. Eventually, I hear Monica call out to the club from the front of the room. Okay, everyone! I think it's about time we share our poems with each other. I take a mental note before I left off before handing, my, er, handing the book over to Yuri. Thanks for letting me borrow this, Yuri. You're welcome. Yuri glances down at the book, staring at its front cover for a moment. Hmm. Something wrong? No, everything's fine. It's just... never mind. Uh, if you say so. I walk over to my bag, dismissing Yuri's behavior as a simple case of her being a bashful person. That's when I notice Monica approach me. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? I'd say it's more of a sad attempt, but yeah, I did. <laughs> it's okay, Allie. When I first started, I found it very difficult to find the right inspiration. So I won't blame you, so long as you tried your best. Right, thanks. Monica walks back to the front of the room, pulling out a composition notebook from her bag. I take notice of the others pulling up out sheets of paper from their own bags as well, which I presume to be their poems. It doesn't take long before I unenthusiastically follow suit. Alright, are we able to skip from there? I, oh wait, we have to... Okay, so it is skipping. and we, we probably took it from the top, right? Oh. Aside from me, I don't know anyone else all that well yet. I think it's best if I see what Sayori's poem is like first. Okay, yeah, I can't tell whenever the skip button is available or not, because the, like, the HUD doesn't change. They might want to consider a different, uh, like, color for it whenever it's not available. This is really good, Hallie! Oh, no, there it goes. Who's there to bomb? Should I check out next? Not skis. Dot. I guess we already read that one. Right. As long as you learn something, it's no problem. You can do it with a little advice anyway. Well, I'll, maybe I'll just leave it hovering over there. Right. I'll try to take some of your advice into account on for my next poem. You better! Swoosh! Yuri! Hmm. 
I guess I must have picked Yuri first last time or something. I'm sure it won't take you long to pick up on these new thing or these things, Hallie. Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep trying. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Mon. Yeah. I don't know if there's anything that will change beyond that little scene there, but you know, we'll we'll just let it go. We'll just let it go. If it goes through all the rest of the demo, then I guess we know. Did we also have options at their argument? I don't think we did. I don't remember. Maybe we did. I don't remember. Yeah, go on! Let Hallie hear everything you really think is right there after all. I'm sure he'll be head over heels for you after this. <sighs> Great. Not even a few steps closer to my bag and they're already inviting me into the, their dispute. She, she, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. I have a good feeling I won't be able to just walk out of this one. <sighs> it's just my luck. Why the hell would it matter if I preferred one over the other? Because I need you to tell Yuri over here that the Pope doesn't need to be so fancy all the time. Look, oh, that's the reason we have so many deep and expressive words in the language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily annoying yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Helen? What's the point of making your pose all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump on the mirror and force them to have figure it out. Help me explain that to her. Alright, I don't know why that part was different, because, like, I'm pretty sure it was exactly the same the other option we did. And I don't believe there were any options beyond this point, because I would have remembered them probably. So, you know what? We're just, we're just gonna, we're just gonna let it keep rolling, because I feel like it. Yep. There, see? This is when we find out he's the vigilante guy. We don't really know exactly what it's all about, but it's totally what's going on. Yep. Mm-hmm. Curious. Curious indeed. And then we broke his arm, then we killed him. It was pretty great. He probably deserved it, but you know, whatever. It also seems we're kind of a psycho. To be continued, yep, that's going to actually do it for Rising Night for now. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and we'll catch you next time with more Doki Doki. Hope to see you then. Bye bye.